Now, uh, this next announcement here, I want us to all acknowledge that it has been a year, exactly a year, this Sunday, uh, since we as a congregation um, decided to no longer meet at, a, at the point in time because of the coronavirus. And so this is, marks a year, this Sunday. And I want to uh, address um, kind of uh, right now our basic plan moving forward. And so we have uh, met with the, the elders and we've talked about this. And like I said, this is going to be one of the longest announcements I will ever make. But I think this is important for us. Uh, and I want you to kind of hear what we're going to do. Starting April 11th, we are going to kind of change our policy uh, concerning COVID. Before I do that, I do want to say a few things. First is that we have done a pretty good job of navigating this thing up to this point as a congregation. This has been a really challenging and unexpected year. A few things I want to talk about here is that we've been able to give and to help those in and outside of our church who have been in financial need. We have stepped up in a number of ways, and I thank you all for that. We have started new small groups, and, have formed, and, and some people have, who weren't in small groups now are in a small group. Some people who have never led a small group are now leading small groups. Pretty cool. We've been able to stay connected with most of our shut-ins. You all have been reaching out and sending gifts. The children's ministry have been doing the same. Thank you for that. We have taken advantage of technology. We have people watching online right now, and we have been able to broadcast more of what we have to more people who have either become ill or who will be in assisted living maybe for the rest of their life. And we are continuing to improve on how we use technology and spread the gospel to benefit those in and outside of our congregation. Most of you and I have attempted to treat the virus as a real threat to the aging, to those with pre-existing conditions, and have recognized that there are outliers affected by this virus. Most of you have been respectful to our congregation's policies up to this point. We've had a number of, member of our members die due to COVID-19. There are people in our church who have lost several family members and friends to this awful disease. This loss, and has, this, this, this loss is and has been painful and real. The elders and I acknowledge that. We also acknowledge that people have fractured relationships over personal or corporate policies that surround the virus. It has taken life events and opportunities away from people, especially young people that are deeply important to us. That is also deeply painful and challenging. Our church has had its struggles. As a church, we have had people who were or are attending or watching online who have decided to disassociate because of our policies or even because of lack of adherence to them at times over the past year. All of this being the case, I and the elders ask for your grace, a commitment to unity and patience with us as we move forward and continue to address this issue. As of now, starting on April 11th, so this is the Sunday following Easter, we will have a new policy concerning masks and COVID-19. Here's kind of basically the two big ideas behind the policy or kind of the newness to the policy. First, we are not going to mandate masks to be worn while people are in the building. Amen. Masks will be optional. The building will be available for you. And second is this basically, the building will be available for use to those in our congregation, but not for rent to outside groups at least until the fall, till basically I return from sabbatical. So because this is a hot, to hot topic, a hot button issue, I do believe you deserve uh, to kind of know how we've gotten to this. And so I'm just going to kind of answer some questions I think you might have. First is how will this policy affect or work for us on Sunday mornings? We will continue to ask that people social distance while in the sanctuary for worship. This means we will keep every other pew, uh, like the every other pew policy that we're using, and ask that you don't sit, those, sit next to those you don't already see regularly. Uh, we will ask, we will have a section for those who prefer not to wear a mask, and we will have a section for those who prefer to wear a mask. The lobby will be used for overflow, 
The sanctuary has a capacity for about 240 people. We have, for the most part, kept it under 50% capacity, so 100 or less for a time. We will continue to kind of do that and watch that. If we start to overflow, we can move to the lobby. If we need to, we can go to two services. If this policy makes you too uncomfortable, I encourage you to continue to engage from home. I will also ask that you acknowledge that there have been people who have been attending here over the past year who have not wanted to wear masks at all so they, that they could participate in corp corporate worship and respect the leadership of the church and be with their church family. So how was this policy decided? It was decided jointly by the elders. I felt it best to talk about the issue at our last meeting and to start working forward before I leave for sabbatical in May. Taking what I understand about this virus, the people in our church, and the challenges moving forward, I suggested this policy with the commitment that, the major that if the majority of the elders disagreed with my suggestion, that I myself and the rest of the elders would submit to the majority moving forward. Here's the reasoning for my suggestion concerning this policy. To be clear, not all the elders agree with me or with each other, but we are committed to unity. First is the vaccine works. The CDC has said as much. Here's a direct quote from the CDC. Currently, authorized vaccines in the United States are highly effective at protecting vaccinated people against the symptomatic and severe COVID-19. Additionally, a growing body of evidence suggests that fully vaccinated people are less likely to have asymptomatic infection and potentially less likely to transmit SARS-CoV-2 to others." End quote. I sent a doctor friend of mine who is a very pro-vaccine, has been very conservative on this, has not seen people, not gone anywhere, worn masks uh, very uh, diligently. Up until this point, I sent him a really simple text. To your knowledge, this is what I said, to your knowledge, is there any evidence that suggests that the vaccine does not work to prevent the symptoms or transmission of COVID-19? He answered with no. So, after vaccinated... There is little to no evidence that you can get the virus and you are unlikely to spread the virus. I don't know of any research that has shown a spread from a vaccinated person to an unvaccinated person or vice versa. Yes, the CDC goes on to say that people should distance and take precautions, but they also say that people who have the vaccine or who have had the vaccine do not need to quarantine or stay away from others if they have been exposed to the virus. There seems to be mixed messaging here. All of the available studies we have have shown the vaccines to be very effective against protecting against the virus, its spread, and its harmful effects. And believe me, like, I thank God for that. Second, the vaccine has been available to the most vulnerable and will be made available to everyone in our state by April or before April 11th. In fact, by March 29th, the vaccine will be made available for anyone over the age of 16. Anyone under the age of 16 is much more likely to die a, or be harmed in a car accident than by COVID-19. Third, the vaccine has caused a number of deaths, has, the vaccine has caused a number of deaths and transmission of the virus to decline dramatically. Fourth, we have been at this for over a year, and I have seen, and I am seeing, not just the negative physical effects, but the spiritual and mental. I've, this is uh, kind of just, I haven't written all this down, but I have referred more people to counseling this year than I ever have in all of ministry. I'm honestly trying to do what is best by helping us, uh, helping us come out of a time of social isolation and fear of each other. Questions you may have. What about the governing authorities? Well, first, if we were going by the CDC's recommendations, over the past year, we would have never met in person in this room or in small groups. Concerning the state of Ohio, I'd like to acknowledge that the church has always had a complex relationship with governing authorities in our country and every country throughout its history as we are citizens of the kingdom of God first. We are supposed to respect our government and be willing to submit to the laws that do not inhibit our worship of and obedience to God. I personally feel, in light of the vaccine, the current and likely future policies that, are being at, that we are being asked to follow are a hindrance to worship and obedience. You are free to disagree with me and this conclusion. 
And you are free to believe that we are not doing what is best. Further, the guidelines by the state of Ohio are not applied evenly. I'll give you a personal example. I can take my mask off at the gym. I go to the gym to stay healthy and prevent myself from the harmful effects of the virus. If the local gym, with hundreds to thousands of members, can navigate a nuanced policy where you don't have to wear a mask, we can too. What about protecting others? Here's another question. In light of the past year, I am concerned about this. But again, the vaccine works. It may take up to two or three to four weeks for it to be fully effective, yet the science shows it works. I actually recommend that you get the vaccine if you aren't allergic to what, is, what it consists of. Um, vaccines throughout our history have saved lives and prevented suffering. My grandmother contracted polio at a young age before the vaccine was made available, and now she spends all of her days in a wheelchair. I understand that some of the CDC are concerned about the variant of COVID-19 virus that, doesn't, that the, the vaccines may not protect against. I am thankful for their concern and work. However, there are no active variants outside our country or inside our country that studies have shown that these vaccines do not work against. Finally, I think we should admit that some precautions that we've been asked to take have not been rooted in science. There is no evidence that this virus spreads outside, yet we have been asked to wear masks outside while not social distancing or with people who are not members of our household. Number three here, what about protecting others? Or what, what happens if there is a spike? So what happens if something changes? What happens if it's a variant? Uh, we do discover a variant or whatever the vaccines don't work, about, work against, or we have this large spike and, and something kind of unforeseeable happens. Well, at this point, I will ask the elders to reassess their policy, and I will ask that you continue to be patient and pray for our church and its leadership. We are announcing this now so that we can ask you for as much moving forward. Now, here's what I hope that we all do moving forward. Here's how I hope we handle this. Until April 11th, please wear a mask. Please wear a mask. Show respect for the current leadership our policy, and this gives people time who want to get the vaccine to get the vaccine. Second, be patient and show grace to each other. This is not an issue worth splitting the family of God over. Everyone has made personal sacrifices this past year, either to protect others or to show love for people in their church family. Jesus said, we will be known by our love for one another. Paul tells us, love bears all things and is patient and kind. Finally, protect the unity of God's church. This is still only a moment in time, and we have tried to handle this with grace. I don't expect everyone to be satisfied with our policies or believe that we have done everything or will do everything correctly. I do ask that everyone shows kindness, gentleness, and respect moving forward towards each other.